Well, funny story. I've told this one other time. Um, so when I first got there, my platoon sergeant, uh, and if he ever hears one of these things, I hope to God the man finds me on social media and reaches out to me because I love him to death to this day and I think really highly of him. But he was a master sergeant. So in a mortar platoon, it was real rank heavy. You had a you had an E8 platoon sergeant, which was rare. Um, you had two E7 section sergeants and then a bunch of E6s and E5s, et cetera, et cetera. And he was our platoon sergeant. And so I show up day one, sign into the unit in processing or whatever, and I finally get to my platoon. And he brings me into his like platoon office, and he's sitting at the desk, and he's this giant man. I started Donald P. Blackman. Huge, huge, like NFL lineman-sized dude. You know, on the overweight side, NFL lineman-sized dude. <laughs> right, and I, I say that lovingly. Um, but he's, he's like, have a seat, and he's talking to me. And he said some cool things in the beginning. He's like, hey, you know, I want you to, to I don't want you to beat yourself up. Like, you're, you're a 19-year-old kid. You made a mistake. You, you got spanked for it. Um, learn your lesson, grow from it, and move on. He's like, I'm not going to carry that into this. I'm not going to hold it over your head. No one's going to look down on you, and I'm not going to let them look down on you. Like, he, he said some really positive things. And then he paused, and he said, I want to ask you a few questions. And I said, okay. And he said... Ranger Battalion. I was never in the Ranger Battalion. He's like, but, you know, I've seen them. And I, you know, I know what they've done in the past and learned a little about them. And, and I said, yes, Sergeant. And he said, uh, there's not a lot of black fellas in the Ranger Regiment. And he was a black guy. And I said, no, Sergeant, there's not. And I'm, I'm, sca- I'm scared, right? Like, I'm in, before we even started, even though he had said all these positive things, like he buttered me up to ask me something difficult. So I'm a little nervous, and he said, uh, not a lot of black fellas in the regiment, huh? And I said, no, sorry, there's not. He said, how many black guys do you think are in the Ranger Regiment? How many black guys are in 3rd Ranger Battalion? I said, four. Just like that. And he, like, jumped in his seat, and he went, you know there's only four? And me, I go, well, I mean, when you're in the dining facility, Sergeant, it's not that hard. Like, there's just not that many guys. I said, I think there's, like, four. And he goes, huh. And he leans forward in his chair, and he leans over the desk to close the distance, and he says... Why do you think that is? And I thought, in probably a split that second, my brain went, shit. If I say whatever, he's going to know that I'm lying to him. And I've now set the conditions for our relationship for the rest of my time here. If I tell him what I really think, he might punch me in the face or he might respect what I have to say. And so I rolled the dice and I said, I'm just going to tell him the truth or at least what I really think to be the truth. Remember, I was an ocean lifeguard. And I said, honestly, Sergeant, I think it's because black guys have trouble passing the swim test. And he paused and then he busted out laughing and he said, you're goddamn right. I can't swim a lick. (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. (laughs) And we had a laugh and, and, you know. And he said, he, right then and there, he said, you're all right, Van Zant. He's like, I, I like you, and I think you're going to do just fine. And so fast forward a while later in the platoon, and we, you know, one night in, in Kuwait, like, we had a long conversation about it. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, they come from different places. He's like, but a lot of black guys that end up in the service, they grew up in the inner city or they grew up someplace where they didn't have pools. They didn't have access. They didn't swim. Yeah, that's so a good point. You, you can call it a stereotype. You know, nowadays it's like people will come after you if you said something like that. There was no, there was nothing racist or anything in any of that. It yeah. was, it was matter of fact, and, and it was true to the regiment and and in a lot of units. And I think they came up with ways to combat that. Like, yeah, you know what? We do have some people that grow up and don't swim, so let's afford them an opportunity to learn and to practice so they can be successful in some of those courses, and they're not limited by their background or experience prior service. Um, so yeah, it, it was a, uh, it was a funny moment, um, that led to a much deeper relationship and a more honest relationship between the two of us. Uh, and he was a really good leader. Like he was a smart guy. He pushed us when we were in the desert. Uh, he genuinely cared about the army and he cared about me. And I knew that. Um, and, and same with, you know, my battalion commander that, that basically talked me into staying in the service. You know, those guys took a personal interest in me as a human being and it stuck with me forever. Like, as a leader, you know, and then even now, like you can have an impact on a single individual's life, sometimes just with the words that you use yeah, and showing them that you care or taking the time to listen to their story or to share yours can make a difference in their life for 
you know, fucking 10, 20 years to come. Um, and those are just a couple of examples of people that had an impact on me that early after a mistake uh, that changed the course of what I did.